Stephanie Kibler, director here at the museum with Risha Lilienthal, curator here at the museum. Whoa! <sighs> we both at, here and at it's, the museum? We're both here at the museum. <laughs> Once in a while, we're here at the village. Uh-huh. Rarely at the library because we've got Linda Evenson, who's she takes that over. librarian extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Powerhouse. Powerhouse Linda Evenson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, if you want research, you want to know the facts, the deal, the story, the history, she's your girl. Mm -hmm. um, which does remind me, we are partnering with the Main Street program here in Albert Lake. Yes. On uh, doing some heart bombing and spreading mm -hmm. the love of the city. And um, if you are a business owner, Linda Evenson will uh, give you the history on your building. Yeah. Um, and you can actually go downtown and put Valentine's up in the storefronts. Um, so very cool. We appreciate partnering with Albert Lee Main Street program. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Yes. Really not a big Valentine's Day person. Um, I, I'm celebrating this year because my granddaughter, who's 15, wanted to celebrate Valentine's with Pete and I. Aw, that's really mom. sweet. That is really sweet, isn't it? So they're coming for a Valentine's holiday trip. Cute. We've never done that before. So new anyway. New tradition. New tradition. Aw. Yeah. So we are doing, uh, we're doing it. So we picked, um, I don't remember how we picked this. We were looking for a, mm -hmm. a Valentine cocktail. And last year I felt we kind of failed. Yeah, we didn't get very We did a modern well. one yeah. and it wasn't, oh, it was okay. It was a nice cocktail. But um, today we're doing the hanky panky. Um, and I just said there must be a rockabilly song or something about Hanky yeah. Panky. Mm -hmm. And in the back of my brain, I could hear it. Tommy James and the Shondells. Oh, you found it. Did my baby does the Hanky Panky. Mm -hmm. uh, also covered by Neil Diamond and Joan Jett. Oh. It's a very good song. Uh, anybody over the age of 45 will probably go, oh, I know my baby does the Hanky Panky. Anyway, it's playing in the back of my head. <laughs> um, this cocktail is unique because it was a stat, or it was it was created, invented, whatever you want to say, in um, the early 1900s. Okay. By a woman bartender. Oh, cool. She was the head bartender at the Savoy. Oh, we've heard of them. Because of um, usually that's tied to Harry Craddock. Yeah. And um, the fact that this woman from 1903 to 1926 was um, the head bartender. Um, her name was Ada Cooley Coleman. Okay. Or Coley, I'm thinking they call her Cooley. Man, Coley maybe, C-O-L-E-Y, Coley. Coley. Yeah. Ada Coley Coleman, Coleman. <laughs> Shoo. Um, when she left the Savoy, she said, the late Charles Howtry, was a Victorian and Edwardian actor uh, who also, he mentored Noel Coward. Co Noel Coward yeah. was one of the best judges of cocktails that I knew. Some years ago when he was overworking, he used to come into the bar and say, Coley, I'm tired. Give me something with a bit of a punch in it. It was for him that I spent hours experimenting until I had invented the new cocktail. Mm. The next time he came in, I told him I had a new drink for him. He sipped it. And draining the glass, he said, by Jove, that is the real hanky panky. Uh -huh. And uh, from that time forward, it's been called the hanky panky. That's really neat because Noel Coward was one of Marion Ross's biggest influences. Um, he also was part of, if I'm not mistaken, the literary club that oh. sat in, what was the hotel bar that we've uh, talked yeah. about? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's just wow. really interesting to tie all of these together and how often the same folk pop up. Um, there is some speculation that Coley mentored Harry Craddock, um, who is known for the, the first cocktail book, really, yeah. that was published that has, and, and also for creating Corpse Reviver 2, ah. which was a good one. Yeah. I like that one. Um, and he is considered the godfather of the classic martini. Oh. Yes. Um, Ada also made cocktails for Mark Twain. Oh, nice. 
the Prince of Wales, and Prince Wilhelm of Sweden. Oh. Along with, then of course, Charles Houtry. Sure. Houtry, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Fancy people. H-A-W-T-R-E-Y. Houtry. Houtry, yeah. Anyway, I do have the recipe for the original. Let's go. However, oh. Oh, yes. we're deviating because Fernet Branca. Very hard to find. Impossible to find yeah. in Minnesota. And you cannot ship alcohol into Minnesota. So we are going with um, Campari. Not Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> <And> <laughs> when you Google, <laughs> when you Google, you can Google substitute for Fernet Branca. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the liqueur is also used in cooking. Mm -hmm. And it's herby. So one of the first substitutes that pops up is Worcestershire sauce. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, that's She's like, that's easy. We can get Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> and I said, no. Not for cocktails. Not for cocktails. But um, we did find um, Campari, which is a substitute. Mm -hmm. Although I think it's actually considered a little sweeter. So. Okay, that's fine. I like sweet drinks. Um, the stuff I've read on the Fernet Branca is that it's not always cracked up to be. So, anyway, I'm now realizing we don't have any ice. Ah. Uh, well, we have ice, but we, we have don't ice. have we any don't have ice. It in there. So, let's do, do this. Do, 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 do. And poop. Ice. And <laughs> and then we need <laughs> one and a half ounces of Italian vermouth, sweet vermouth. Sticky. A little sticky. One and a half. One and a half. I'm thinking we should do these one at a time sure. again. And we're also going to do one and a half ounces of gin. Ooh. It calls for a dry gin. I don't know. Um, is it? Is there a, such a thing as a sweet gin? It smells weird. Vermouth smells weird? Does it smell like vermouth to you? Well, I guess. It kind of smells like... Um, Old Lambrusco, which is a red wine, kind of a sweet red wine. Oh. But like you clearly can see, that's not an old bottle. And then two dashes, and I'm just, you go for two dashes. i not even sure how you're going to do two dashes. Dash. Yeah. No, that was a big dash, but I'm thinking it maybe needs it. Good. That looks like two dashes. And then you shake that up. Ooh, we haven't shaken one in a while. I know, we haven't shaken one in a while. As you recall, Risha has a whole method. It's unique. It's unique. I gotta it's, jump with it. It's not what any bartender normally does, but she's got it down. And then you strain it into the glass. So I'm gonna let you replenish the ice and I'm gonna squeeze the orange peel. Oh, so dumping. Dumping, yeah. And you can't see this, but just a tad of juice comes out um, into that little drink. And then we're gonna mix a second one so we don't have to share pandemic, COVID, don't need to share glasses. That's good. Um, so one other little tidbit I thought was kind of fun about Coley. Do you remember this? One and a half, yes. one and a half, two dash. Yes. Um, she's quoted in London newspapers right about the time of her retirement. Um, in, so in the Daily News in December of 25, in cocktail lore column, um, and a piece uh, titled Savoy's Woman Mixer to Retire. And then in the Sphere on January 2nd, 26th, the title, The Cocktail Queen. What'd you just do? I'm trying to figure out how to hold it. <laughs> Coley says she knows there is all to be known about cocktails, having seen thousands of Englishmen and Americans drinking cocktails. Their differences, she says, are as follows. Englishman, likes dry drink, drinks slowly, is good judge of cocktail, examines it meditatively. American, 
like sweet drink, drinks quickly, cannot distinguish one drink from another, ruminates over flavor. I love that. I, I'm, 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 um, I'm feeling like the next time I go to one of my favorite spots, I'm gonna pull that out and, and get the bartender's opinion on Americans cocktailing. Stop. It smells kind of herby, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a difference in color? Did you do the dashes? I did, but it took a while for it to settle. We can always add a dash if we need yeah. to. That peel did not, um, did not, um, juice as well as that peel did. Oh. All right, here's, here's my own nothing. Hanky panky. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's weird. Okay, we're gonna let that rest for a bit. It's kind of almost, almost smoky tasting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. There's an aftertaste in there. There's a I wish it would say like what what's bitter. It says this is bitter. Mm -hmm. That's like what it. The, that's the what orange you, comes out though. The orange too. does come out, but it's and you don't get a big ginny taste. Mm -mm. It's you, it's very herby. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Okay, I got some options for you here. Okay. All right. I like options. Okay. So I can talk to you. I kind of since this is the hanky panky. Um, I went into our 1882 book and looked for families that have a lot of children. Well, like, she you can understand. If you understand, you understand. If you know, you know. Um, but and if you don't, you don't. You do. <laughs> um, so I have different people who you're blushing. <laughs> uh, so we can talk about. Um, a very uh, fruitful family, actual fruit, um, about J.E. Murtaugh, mm. uh, about one of the most prosperous and progressive farmers in Albert Lee Township, about, that's not that good. Um, or about Thor. Thor? Mm -hmm. As in God of Thunder? No. Oh. As in a Norwegian named Thor after the God of Thunder. Oh, I'm torn. Like, children, fruit, or Thor? They're all children. Uh, I want to hear about Thor. You want to hear about Thor? So Thor Anderson. I feel like he's, he, isn't he, isn't, wouldn't, the, wouldn't Thor, the God of Thunder, be partnered with Euros, the God of love? Eros? Eros, Euros. <laughs> Different Give pantheons. Give me heroes. <laughs> I don't have a clue, but they are different pantheons. But 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 there should be some connection. Just give They're it to me. Vibrant Would you? Personalities. Just give it to me. They're both vibrant personalities. They're both gods. Yes. <laughs> but he was okay. So Thor Anderson was a prominent figure in Manchester Township for many years, and he always took an active part and occupy, occupied practically all the town offices within the gift of his fellow voters, doing especially good work as a fair and impartial town assessor. Hmm. Yeah. Is it, I suppose you could be an unfair assessor. Yeah, you, you definitely could. And it says when he came to Freeborn County, his success was pronounced from the start and in the time, he was a proud possessor of 1,200 acres of land. After a useful and happy life, he died April 15th, 1909. And while a young man, it says while a young man, he married Kari Evenson, who died in 1897, but they had one child and she came to this country with her parents uh, and attended the school here, and married an Ivor A. Rodsatter, 
and they spent a happy life together, reared nine children, and attained an enviable position in the community. Enviable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was Thor. And his Thor. daughter had nine children. God of Thunder. Or no. Yes, God of Thunder, but not that one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, I see you caught yourself. Okay, give me something else. Okay. That one, I, I expected more. You expected more? Yeah, I, I expected I expected to go, ooh. Oh, I want to, I want to, I want to say, wow. Okay, let me, let me, give me a minute. I thought there was something, didn't you send me something on a crime of passion? Oh my gosh. The the shooting? Was it a shooting? That yeah. I the, I, I thought I, that was involved with um, Helmer Myrie. That's right. Yeah. I was expecting like a crime of passion. Mm. That's Dave. Okay. That's Dave. I've got Mr. Wedge. Okay, let me hear about Mr. He Wedge. He was an advocate of He grew roses. He did. And he was an advocate of prohibition. So he wouldn't have been excited about this drink. Um, Not sure I'm excited about this one, <laughs> to be honest. He was nominated by his party for the position of Lieutenant Governor. Uh, he was married July 29th, 1879. To did he serve as Lieutenant Governor? Yes. Right. I did not know yep. that about Wedge. And he was also um, for the Office of Congressman. Hmm. Yeah. And he married Cornelia E. Todd, daughter of Reverend J.D. Todd and they had nine children together and then he was married again after she passed and he married again to mary b cutler and they had one child who was an adopted son oh interesting yeah where did they adopt their son that's, from i don't know that's all i know is he was an adoptive son his name was alan c he was born in 1907. Hmm. yeah but he was an earnest believer in the possibilities of fruit growing in minnesota and was the first to plant a commercial orchard in Freeborn County, from oh. which apples were shipped in car lots. In car lots, mm -hmm. not in truckloads. No, car lots. Car lots. Yeah. His young orchard of about 30 acres at Echo Farm, having several times furnished three car loads for outside market. Oh. Yeah, so that was the, the fruitful mm. family also. I, I, I enjoy driving by where Wedge Nursery used to yeah. be. Because you can still see, although some are overgrown, but you can see the straight lines of like arbor vitae mm -hmm. and um, some of the other trees or shrubs they planted you know as soon as you get there where the edge of the where the edge of the yeah. uh, nursery was. was yeah um i have another thing that, okay. that isn't quite connected to freeborn county but we have these items so this is called the hanky panky we have lots of hankies we do have lots of, we have lots of hankies in collection and that was something Hankies had to do with etiquette in the Victorian time period. Just like we have fans in our exhibit, we have a whole kind of diagram of how fans were used in etiquette. And uh, the Victorian man or woman would need to be well versed in specific language of all these objects in order not to give the wrong signal to their intended flirt. <laughs> Dropping. I'm, I'm gonna use that somewhere. <laughs> Is this your intended flirt? <laughs> Dropping a handkerchief or fan means we'll be friends, but oh. dropping your parasol means I love you. <sighs> Tapping the chin with a glove or a parasol means I love another. <laughs> but placing your forefinger on your left hand, of your left hand, on your chin while sitting in a window means I desire an acquaintance. So the girl sitting in her bedroom window longingly looking out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But handkerchiefs, they have a whole bunch of different signals with handkerchiefs. So drawing it across the lips means you're also desirous of an acquaintance. Drawing it across the eyes means I'm sorry. <laughs> Taking it by the center means you are too willing. <laughs> <laughs> Drama student, perfect for this. So, dropping it. Oh my god, it, I like the two willing. That's the again dropping it is mean we will be friends. Twirling it in both hands means indifference. Really? Mm -hmm. Drawing it across.
across the cheek. So like drawing it across someone's cheek, I love you. Drawing it through your hands means I hate you. Letting it rest on the right cheek means yes. Letting it rest on the left cheek means no. But are you saying yes and no too? Whatever that means. The hanky panky. Yes. That's yes. Twirling it in your left hand means I wish to be rid of you. Oh, I did that a lot before <laughs> I got divorced. Oh no. Twirled my hanky. Twirling it in your right hand means I love another. Oh dear. Folding it means I wish to speak with you. Drawing it across the forehead, we are washed. Over your shoulder means follow me. <laughs> Opposite corners with both hands means wait for me. Okay. I thought she was gonna I thought it was gonna be more violent <laughs> than that. I thought there was gonna be placing it on the right ear means you have changed. Place it, oh, letting it remain on the eyes. So letting it remain on the eyes, you are cruel. <laughs> this would mean, what if you did the wrong thing? Exactly. If you wind it around your forefinger, it means I'm engaged. Winding it around your ring finger, I'm married. Shouldn't you have married ring, engagement rings? Shouldn't that be the, yeah, but. The rings didn't really come about for a while, though. Engagement rings? Oh, that, I thought that Victorian was a whole diamond was, thing. Oh, that's we did talk yeah. about that. Um, and then this I really like. This and is the I'm last just going to say, diamonds are not a girl's best friend. And they're also not forever. No, they are not. Um, <laughs> putting it in your pocket means no more at present. Okay. No, no. So I have two thoughts on this. Yes. The first is um, some of the flirtatious ones. Mm -hmm. um, there's now this whole bar thing, you know, where what you do with your straw mm. is a is a signal for okay. things. And I, as you were going through some of those, I'm thinking, oh, that you can do that with a that people do that with a straw. Yeah, I thought that was really so. We've gone from hankies to straws, mm -hmm. and now I've lost what my second thing was because it was. Oh, I heard this this morning on the radio talking about royalty and okay. their little traditions. Yeah. Did you know when the queen eats a burger, she doesn't get a bun because it's considered rude to pick up food with your hands? Wow. Royals do not eat anything with their hands. They cut their bananas with a knife and a fork. Wow. I thought that was fascinating. Wow. Anyway, those were my that two thoughts cool. on, on hanky etiquette. <laughs> There's another thing about hankies is in <clears throat> gift giving superstitions. Uh, so some gift giving superstitions are quite literal. So giving a handkerchief is said to signify tears to come. Oh. And in Sweden, a man is never supposed to give his lover a silk handkerchief or she will wipe away her affection for him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no handkerchiefs no, for no. Valentine's gift gifts. No. Yeah. Just give swizzle sticks instead. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.